Good afternoon. We're going to try this again. This is our third cartoon voice panel online. My name is Mark Evanier, and once more, I have rounded up five of the best cartoon voice actors in the business. You would not believe how many times you have heard these people on your favorite cartoon shows, and even on some you didn't like. They, they'll work for anybody. We are <laughs> delighted to have with us today these people. Come on in, panelists. <sighs> Hi. In Hi. What's happening? There. Good. In, in box number two is Mr. Alan Oppenheimer. In box number three Hi is there. Allison Packard. In box Hello. number four is Jason Marsden. In box number five is L. Newlands. And in box number six, Mr. John Mariano. Thank you all for joining us again on this, in this event here. Um, we're going to start by asking each of you to tell us some of the shows you're on or have been on recently. Uh, and I'm going to preface this by mentioning that voice actors are very frequently under what they call NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. They've worked on a show, it's been recorded, it's being animated, it's being turned into a video game maybe, but the producers don't want them announcing it until the producers announce it, so they can't talk about that. So how many of you are under NDAs at this moment? You've done a job you can't talk about, okay? Only women. Oh, Jason's too. Okay, good. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's talk, I'm going to start with John. John, tell us some of the shows. Yes, you, Mariano, in all caps. Oh, it's uh, very a pleasure to be here. <laughs> <laughs> tell us uh, some of the shows we've heard you on. Uh, let's see. Well, going back, uh, Hey Arnold was a show that I worked on. Uh, I worked on a lot of shows for Warner Brothers, um, a lot of the Supermans and the Batman series. Um, and going back to even uh, Hanna Barbera, where I was. Uh, Wally Gator for Hanna Barbera, you know. Um, <laughs> yes. But um, now, now, John, when you were doing Wally Gator, were you doing Dawes Butler doing Edwin, or were you doing Edwin? Uh, I was doing Edwin, but okay. don't tell me, honey. Yeah. Because <laughs> right. I just right. went. To, I went to the source since that's what Dawes did. Yes. So I just I did I did the win. Um, probably most notable, I think, would be uh, I did a series called um, Animaniacs. Steven Spielberg's Animaniacs, so I worked on that, and um, I did uh, Bobby uh, the Pigeon, which was kind of like, um, you know, De Niro from Good Feathers, you know, well, Good Fellas, but then we did <laughs> so just a little bit, so okay. yeah. Just, uh, I'll give you a true story. Uh, I booked John to be on one of our cartoon voice panels in San Diego one day. That is a true later, story. Later that day, I was talking to Greg Berger, who you all know, who was on our last panel. And we're talking about different things. And I said, did you see the Late Late Show last night? There was a guy on who did the most incredible Burgess Meredith impression from Rocky. Do you know who that was? And he said, yeah, that was John Mariano. And I said, oh, oh I, I talked to him an hour and a half ago. He did this incredible – he does – very esoteric. Well, do it. Well, do it. You, okay. you got to listen to the right thing in your ear if you want to hear correctly. A lot of people today, they say what they call a lot of stupid things. Wow. <laughs> wow, bravo. Yeah, that's nice. Yes. So anyway, they had, a, they, had a, they had a made up like Burgess Meredith in, in the Rocky films, and it was just an uncanny impression. <laughs> there John, was no makeup. I just wore a hat, basically. <laughs> it was, it was, okay. John, we are not getting all of John here because John tends to act with his body a lot, his, his body posture. He's, he's one of those actors who. You have to see all of them to, to for the creation. Thank you, John. L, what have we heard you on lately? Um, oof, well, I do have some a lot of NDAs. So lately, uh, I've been working, but a lot of stuff's not out. Um, I have a couple of characters that are sort of like uh, small, but people go, "Oh my god, yeah, I remember that character." So I played Mrs. Death on the regular show. Um, <laughs> she had four arms, um, and my child was played by Michael Dorn. Um, <laughs> yes. He voiced Thomas and she was very scary. She was like, Come on, Thomas, come to mummy. You know, Thomas can be quite a handful. Ooh. So she was like that. And then I also played a, another kind of wacky but really fun character um, on Adventure Time. Uh, I played Butterscotch Butler, the Butterscotch Scottish Butler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I got to uh, I got to play opposite Tom Kenny, which was awesome. Um, and for that one, I was kind of I was a butterscotch, and I was lit kind of evilly. But then at the end, the reveal was that I had been reading his diary, and that's how I knew everything about 
about what was happening but she was like <laughs> um, she was like to play one must know strategy yes but to know victory one must know your opponent she was kind of like, wow um yeah will you come over and read my diary out loud to me <laughs> seriously Please? Yeah. you can even read my high school diary I know. um and then the other fun one that i did kind of more recently was for wabbit which is like the new uh return uh, re revisioning of looney tunes um mm. And that was really cool because I got to play, I, I got to star with Daffy Duck, you know, Dee Bradley, Dee Bradley Baker. I got to star with Daffy Duck um, and she was a, a leprechaun and she, uh, she just kind of like <laughs> broke on to that. She just kind of like threw herself into the scene and she was like, excuse me, I'm Mary Scanty. I'm looking for me cousin Shameless. The legend of the looky, the legend of the looky, look, oh my God, I can't even say it. The legend of the looky duck is true. I'm going to chain him up inside a tiny box, inside an even tinier house so he can be my lucky charm forever. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm craving breakfast cereal wow. for some reason right now. I don't know oh, if there's like a if there's a very stereotypical character from the British Isles. Apparently, I've played them. <laughs> hold on, Nailed a second. Hold, hold on, Sam. Does somebody have? Yeah, we're getting an echo because somebody's got a YouTube on. Oh, somebody's got YouTube on. The background is picking this up on a six-second delay. Like, can you can you hear me on this? And I. Can you hear this? This, or am I the only one hearing this? No, I can hear the echo. Okay. Somebody... Yeah, I think it's. Hmm. Hello. See, we're still getting a, we're still getting a bleed through on. I can't it be... totally ruined my part there. I'm, I'd like to start over. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, Hang on. De no, definitely not me. Is anybody going through uh, like a... Do you have, do you have, have your the iPhone, have, on, maybe? Have, have, have an iPhone open? That's or somebody's yeah. doing their speakers, like, you know, the, yeah, that's the MacBook thinking. or something? Those yeah, speakers. I think right. Yeah. Some, somebody's picking up the broadcast. Maybe it's you. No. Um, <laughs> Truth comes out. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I just muted, so it's not coming out of me. Okay. You want to uh, test, test us? Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna yeah, just for a second here. Bear with us, folks. I'm gonna turn each of your audios off for one second. Okay. See where we get. Okay, I'm gonna mute Jason. Testing one, two, three. We still get it. Okay. I unmute Jason. I'm gonna uh, mute L. Testing one, two. Testing. It seems to be gone. No, no, it's it's still there. It's still there. Sorry. Okay. okay. Uh, John is muted already. Okay, so it's not John. John, unmute yourself. Okay, Allison. Yeah, testing. Yeah, it's still there, the echo. I want to mute Alan. Yeah. Testing. 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 Busted. I think, Alan, I think somebody, is, is somebody in your house uh, do, do, uh, listening to the show as we're doing this? No, Somebody but my wife might be on her computer in the other room. She uh, might be doing. It. Let me let me go uh, get her. I'll go. Okay, I'll, see if that's. Oh man. Uh, okay. Whatever it is, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm all good. Oh, we all need a good nap. I'm so, I'm sorry for making a political statement. Pardon me. Uh, yes. <laughs> Just con controversial cartoon and voice. Masks, masks are not a political statement. They're they're a representation of your IQ. Yeah, that's, that's... I, I must be really smart then. I must be. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that in school. Yeah. Something we said. Trouble. Right. Oh dear. And now, Mr. Op. Hello, 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 oh. hello. He's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. <laughs> Everything's fine. Is it it's fine. gone? It's fine. It's fine. Uh, is, is it is it gone, Mark? Yes, it is. It's she gone. Was, yes. Wow. Who's listening to the TV? Yes, the cream work. The, so keep applying it. No, 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 it's back. No, it's back. Wait, I'm gonna mute. Wait a minute. Let me mute me. Now you. So it's I, not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute me. Then you guys say something. I'll come back. Hold on. All right. Something. Yeah. Well. Something. something. Yeah. I yeah. I echoed. You know what? Are you sure you it's not me? I thought when you turned me off. I don't, I'm going to mute I would, myself. I would never turn you off. 
Well, I must say this, uh, this is riveting conversation. I know. Sorry, <laughs> right, guys. The live streamers are just like, how okay. do I fast forward? Uh, I, I don't know how to fix this. We'll, we'll just have to live with it. Okay. Maybe it'll go away on its own. Um, All right. I'll be right or, back. Or we can make this a new game show. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Jason, uh, tell us what you've been on lately. Uh, uh, well, uh, nothing because I can't get to my dealer. Uh, everything's no, closed. No, no. This is, oh, uh, this is shows. Oh, oh, uh, it, you know, I did, I did a thing in my closet for the first time because when they they shut everything down, and I moved into a new house, and I was, and I was like, oh shoot, I, I have to scramble and put padding in this closet, and get that going. So I did my first gig in my new place. It was a video game. That's all I can say. Uh, but people might know me from uh, a Goofy movie. I played uh, Max Goofy's son. Hey, you know, uh, you know what my dad and Mark Kevin here have in common? They're both goofy. <laughs> I voiced a black cat in a. Hold on, I even I brought props. I brought I voiced the black cat, Thackeray Binks, in Hocus Pocus. That's right, the boy that turns into the black cat. There, there are no virgins in here, are there? I hope they shoot. Not. I'm oh, allergic to cats. Oh my goodness! Sorry, good night. I, I, where's my cat box? All right, so over here. Uh, and uh, I worked on a Young Justice. Uh, most recently, uh, doing the voice of uh, Impulse, Bart, Bart Allen, it's all, it's all crash. Remember when uh, Nightwing tried to take sample my DNA? That was such a dick, Grayson thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. I spirited away. Uh, I've done some 90s television. Uh, and uh, and you, looked, you looked at another cat of yours. And oh, yes, the cutest kid in the whole wide world, Nermal. Yes, that's where I work. My, my, my boss right here, Mr. Evan here. So he doesn't send me to Abu Dhabi. No, it's that, 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 that mean orange cat. My goodness. Yeah, Jason wow. was a normal on uh, the Garfield show. Oh, it was wow. very amazing. And we, kept, we kept sticking with other characters to do, and he, we could never stump him no matter what it was. <laughs> anyway, thank, thank you, Jason. Allison, you. Run, run through your recent resume for us. Uh, well, oh, speaking well, of cats, I, uh, I, I, this little guy, Jibanyan. Oh, no, look uh, at that. Oh, Alan. I don't know. Alice. Alice. A lot of light. No, it's it's Allison. Alan. We're doing Allison. Or it's Allison. Okay. Allison. Oh, Allison. Alan, Alan you me. wait for you. I'm going to taking you last because we got a lot to talk about with you. <laughs> All right, oh. Allison. Okay, back to this guy. Pause of fury. Um, Jibanyan on season one and two of Yokai Watch, um, as well as the Yokai Watch video games, and um, there was even a movie out. I also played um. The big bad on that, which was Dame Dead Time. She was this like, dun, dun, dun. that was like her big catchphrase. Um, on the new Tom and Jerry show, I play Toodles. The, oh, Tommy, it's sweet, lovable little Toodles. Um, Robin on Space Racers, which is now airing on Netflix. Um, Zaza Zoom, more like Zaza Splash. Um, I was Alma on Poppycat. See, like you would never bring these things to a con because it would just be ridiculous, but they're they're here in my studio. So this was Alma and she was like, oh, poppy cat, I just love my blue pearls. Um, yeah, there was a video game maybe some people played called World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft. Oh, um, yeah. You remember that? I mean, there's like, I can't That's hear, right. I, there's no interacting with the audience really to know <laughs> what they're familiar with, but I was the female blood elf. Um, so she's like, my manatap brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> there's like all the, the flirt and cheat lines. Um, I've also played L. I played a death on um, Marvel versus Capcom Infinity, the, the game. Um, she was pretty evil, but only two arms. Um, and she Maybe just that's why there's a delay because we're bringing the death. So it's, yeah. like, it's held the feet. <laughs> and she's like, I know the name of every soul that ever lived and died and ever will. Yet I do not know yours, demon. Explain. Um, and then, like, if we want to take it, like, way back to, like, my first series that I recall was this lady, Little Miss Sunshine. I'm Little Miss Sunshine. <laughs> That's what everyone tells me. <laughs> um, and then I was Little Miss Whoop, so she was like, they call me four eyes because I wear eyeglasses, yo. Don't see a thing without them, but I'm good with the flow. Um, and then Miss Naughty, who, oh, bye. See you later. Um, Miss Naughty, who was like, 
Sometimes I just can't help myself. <laughs> I think my mic peaked a little there. I'm wow. Sorry, so I'm gonna wow. Thank it. you, Allison. That's an oh. amazing repertoire. Anyway, now, uh, Alan, you we're gonna, before we get to your all. voice, before you get to your voices, I want to tell people a little bit about Alan. I wanted Alan to be on these panels for a long time. He was my he's my big get for the, for this series. This oh. man has had one of the most amazing <laughs> careers of any actor Don't I have ever Don't met. I, okay. Now, for example, uh, you may recognize him from a lot of his on-camera appearances on different TV shows. I have here a list of 60, 60 live-action uh, live primetime TV shows that this man has been on. Uh, actors, my other actors, you all have your your copies of this list here. Okay, now, Alan, <laughs> we're, we're going to do a, we're going to do a reading of your credits. Oh, These now this is partial. This is not movies because he's been in a bunch of movies. Like he was in Westworld. He was in Toy Story Four. He's been in lots of movies. This is live action TV shows, most of which you've heard of. He was on these shows at least once, in some cases, dozens of times. We will start with Allison, then go Jason, then go Al, then go John. We're going to go all 60 as fast as we can. Okay, ready? Allison, you start. Alice. The Andy Griffith Show. Arnie Miller. Witched. The Bill Cosby Show. The Bold Ones. Bonanza. Courtship of Eddie's father. CPO Sharky. The Defenders. Diagnosis. Murder. The Doris Day Show. Dragnet. The FBI. Felony Squad. Get smart. Gilmore Girls. Sunday, Monday, Happy Days. Harry O. Heart to Heart. Hawaii five -o. He and she. Here comes the brides. Here's Lucy. The high chaper chaperone. <laughs> Hogan's Heroes. Do 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 do. I dream of Jeannie. I spy. <laughs> Iron Sad. It's about time. The Jimmy Stewart Show. Night Rider. Oh, nope, you for the defense. Sorry. Okay. Judd for the defense. Then Allison, Night Rider. Night Rider. L.A. Law. Lancer. Christ. Lou Christ? No, you're not on Christ, but you're on Lou Grant, though. <laughs> you play a great I was guy. up for Christ, but I was turned down. <laughs> <laughs> you were too young. Not Jewish Jesus. enough, right? Okay. Uh, right. Uh, Allison, you're next. Love, American style. Mama's family. Mannix. Married with children. Matlock. McLeod. The Mod Squad. Mr. Belvedere. Murphy Brown. The world and welcome to it. Uh, my world and welcome. My world and welcome to it. The name of the game. Night Court. Partridge family. Sesame Street. The Six Million Dollar Man. Soap. Say now swear. Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Star Trek The Next Generation. Star Trek Voyager. Star Trek Alan Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That girl. <laughs> Touched Amazing. by an angel. The Untouchables. And what's happening? <laughs> what an amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. resume this man has had. Wow, that's so impressive. Even, okay. I don't even yeah. remember half of those. Okay. Oh. That is oh, about one-fifth of all the shows this man has been on television. That's it is astounding. There's, there's people who have great careers because they get one big part and they're on shows, you know, the same show every week. Alan got a reputation for being a guy who could step in at any time and play frequently really officious business guys. He plays <laughs> a lot of mean guys. He plays a lot of mean guys. I played uh, a Mexican he, mayor once. Really? Oh my goodness! On, if he's in, on Bonanza, on Bonanza, Mexican okay. mayor. All right. <laughs> and I submit, and I met this man when he was doing the uh, musical Sunset Boulevard with Glenn Close. <laughs> George Hearn introduced us mm -hmm. backstage, and yeah. then I went back to New York and saw him on Broadway playing Cecil B. DeMille brilliantly, and I've seen him in several plays over the years. And he's wow. got a last, huge list of movies. After we're done here, folks, go to the IMDb, look up Alan Oppenheimer. <laughs> you, and that is, and even that is like maybe half of what he's done. Alan, I Alan. saw you in Sunset Boulevard. I saw that, but that was outstanding. That's one of my favorite musicals. 
It's wonderful, huh? Yes. Yeah, we did it two, one year here and two years in yep. New York. Yep, amazing. With Glenn Close and Betty Buckley. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, now, let's talk about cartoon voices. <laughs> we, we, don't, we are usually not impressed here by live action. We're impressed by cartoon voices. <laughs> so tell am us, I. Tell us some Listening of the to you people. Holy Jesus. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean by you people? <laughs> you oh. people. Oh, John, I have to apologize to you. I played a pigeon once <laughs> at the actor's studio. Oh, oh. yeah. It <laughs> must have been from. On a ledge. <laughs> oh, the organ. <laughs> you guys had a turkey on the last one. It's like all the poultry is getting. Uh, this is getting oh, foul. Better pigeon. Better pigeon. You bet. Yeah. yeah. Parts what, of a family. And, and, what, and what are the pigeons going to do now? They're taking down all the statues. Come on. It's <laughs> all right. Uh, Alan, tell mm -hmm. us some of the other shows you've been on. Uh, the, the, your, your, the voice you're probably best known for is from Masters of the Universe. Where you Skeletor. Did, yes. But you did a lot Skeletor. of characters in that show. But, but remember what Skeletor sounded like? Yeah, I was, I was four regulars on that. I was Skeletor and Merman and Man-at-Arms and Cringer. All of those on He-Man. So Skeletor, you know. <laughs> so what are you all doing here with me, you boobs? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and then Merman, of course, Merman. He talks underwater, so he talks like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you laughing at? Oh, you got an accent. What are you laughing at? <laughs> wow. And then Cringer. Cringer, which is just, you know, cowardly cat, you know. No, oh, you don't have to do that. I don't want to do that. I'm going to turn into. Ah. That's it. <laughs> and then uh, Man at Arms was just me, regular, you know. And we then uh, I did a lot of shows for Filmation after that. And, and I don't have them written down because I don't even remember them. I know that. There was an awful lot of stuff, though. Okay. And then yeah, yeah, I did this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let, let me tell you here, Alan. In the chat room, we got a message here from someone said, I still can't believe Alan was Falcor. The never ending story is so oh. my favorite. And yeah. someone else, Alex Jaramillo, just wrote, I saw Alan on That Girl last week. Oh, I, hope he's talking, I hope he's talking about the TV show that he didn't see you on That Girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I've shaved on my career in my room. Uh, Alan, no. you were on. You were Alcor. on the. You were on a show I did, I did called the Wuzzles. Ah! That was your show. <laughs> I, 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 I wrote. I wrote the beginning of the pilots for that show, and you were uh, Croc, the villain, <gasps> the villain character, and you were Rhinoki on that show. Rhinoki, Rhinoki my yeah. son's gonna freak out. <laughs> yeah, Rhinoki. We have Isn't all that the wonderful books. characters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The only ones in, that have it. No. Damn thing didn't run. It was so good. It's so good. And I think they should reboot it, Mark. Um, we read the books all the time. He has the Rhinoki stuffed animal, which I had a few drinks and then bought off eBay for $50. It was not <laughs> my wisest choice, but it came with the book. Um, so, yeah. Wow. Oh, it's marvelous. Witty and marvelous. And we had a great cast, didn't we, Mark? Yes, yes. I, I cast I, uh, the, uh, the show initially, then I left it. And then they switched you. You, I think you and Bill Scott changed the parts that I was cast you for. I wanted you playing Musil. I wanted him playing Rhinoki, but they switched them. Oh. But but you had Stan Freeberg in there. You mm. had Brian Cummings. You had uh, Bill Scott in one of his rare non Jay Ward appearances. You had Joanne Worley, Henry Gibson, uh, and I'm blanking on uh, the other people on that show. There were a couple of other. Uh, 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 Kathleen uh, Helpy uh, was was uh, um, Butterbear. Anyway, it was a really Can you do it? show. Can you do, do you, the voice? Do you remember Rhinoki's voice, no. Alan? Okay. No. All right. Uh, Alan, I'll also tell you that uh, that Alan was very frequently the the surprise villain on Scooby Doo. He was on quite a few episodes of that. In fact, I played Scooby Dumb. And Scooby Dumb, yes. Scooby Dumb, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, he, but frequently in an episode, if you watch a Scooby Doo episode and there's three or four suspects and Alan is one of the suspects, he's the villain. <laughs> <laughs> and he would have got away with it if it wasn't for those pesky kids. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> when you're bald, you always play the villain. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, he was on 
just uh, look at the IMDb. Alan, thank you for, for joining us. Smurfs. Here. Smurfs. Smurfs. That's right. Oh, my God. A couple wow. of Smurfs. Uh, it's, it's an amazing career, and it ain't over. He's still, you're still working. You're still working a yeah. lot, actually. You, yeah. Anyway, some of those shows that, that we went through the list are still on, L.A. Law and things like that. They're still You're still working on. I uh, still get residuals of a dollar or 27 cents, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you got my deal. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, no, <laughs> All right, it, thank you. Enough about me. Okay, yes, okay, enough about you. Move on. I, I would like to go through again, and I'd like everybody on this piece of the panel to tell me a voice job you had, and this doesn't have to be a cartoon. Something that we will, we've heard, we heard someplace else we heard your voice on a commercial, a toy, a theme park, a dubbing, looping job, something else. Anybody want to, got one that they want to, want to volunteer? Sure. Okay. Winchell's, Don Winchell's Donuts. You were the voice of oh, Winchell's Donuts. Oh, no, Donut. not the lemon. <laughs> <laughs> I retire. That's it. All right. I was also in. I was. I was a bug. I was a bug on raid. Yeah. Oh, you know. Okay. Raid. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I did and got two years of residuals for Christ's sake. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Great. I have uh, something. You're going to spray me with raid. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. That's great. I just want to thank the bugs for this. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm here all week. How's this take? Okay. okay, Allison, have you got have you got a commercial or something that we, uh, we recognize? Well, so I did Walla for Toy Story Four, and um, you know they never they don't really credit you're just like additional voices. But I was the GPS voice before um, they came in as a GPS voice. So just like turn left at the next light, turn right, <laughs> and that's how they kind of get into all the trouble at the end in their RV car. Yeah, Alan. You. Alan was a character in Toy Story 4. I can't remember the yeah, name of the That was the old, old timer alarm clock. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Okay. Jason, you got an obscure voice from something? Sure, sure. I also did some, I did some wall in, in Monsters U, and they, they, you could pick me out of that. But I think what's interesting, and I, I have this in common with, well, he's over here, right? Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Oppenheimer. Yeah. I, I did a, a deep space, a, a next generation, but there's an episode. It's titled for the hardcore Star Trek fans. It's titled Silicon Avatar, and Data, played by Brent Spiner, has to bring up a uh, an audio journal, an audio log from this young boy to recite to his mom. So when Brent Spiner opens, he gets the downloads the uh, the journal, opens his mouth. It's my voice coming out of his mouth. So mm. I was a big uh, uh, Next Generation fan. So every time I that was like my in to like talk to Brent Spiner. I was like, hey, I talked out of your mouth. No one episode. <laughs> Jason, Jason, could you explain for anybody who watching who doesn't know what Walla is? Explain yeah. to what Walla is. Yeah, so like when a movie's done, when a movie or TV show is done, they have to, they have to sweeten it. They have to add some like like beyond just like the, the special effects. You know, if there if there's a crowd scene, they hire a bunch of us to gather in a studio and just kind of like ad lib talking. If it's like a big crowd scene, like for Monsters University, it takes place at a college. So we had to be like, you know, college kids hanging out outside talking and, oh, did you, hey, you, you dropped your book. Oh, did you get that paper? Oh, I can't believe I got the scare floor again. And you, and you kind of take turns and sometimes you get a, a, a role. Sometimes you get in, within a group and then, uh, and then you see the movie and you're like, oh, there's me. That, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's de let's let's demonstrate this. Let's let's say you're all a wall a group now. Okay. Okay. Let's say that we're doing a scene. It's a cocktail party, mm. a classy high cocktail party. Let's hear some cocktail party chatter, like you would have at a party. <gasps> Go. Oh, thank you. I cannot <laughs> believe it. I'm so so, all right. so all right. are you are you going you you go so yeah, so yeah I can I, I, I haven't seen you in front of you. You look the same. Just Waiter, like, you're you're very yeah. attractive yeah. lady. I would like yeah. another martini. Yeah. I'll Thank happily you. get that martini for you. Yes. Cut, cut, yeah. cut. Okay, that that's all. Hey, Walla. good looking. Can I walk you home? <laughs> <laughs> Foster Brooks, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> right. party, Foster that's my favorite character. It's my favorite character. <laughs> I have played that in restaurants to embarrass tables. <laughs> I've walked, yo, no, no, no kidding. I was, I was, I was working in Philadelphia, 
with uh, uh, what's his name uh, anyway. And I was sitting at the bar and I, I was doing that, you know, and there was a table over here and, uh, uh, and the guy said, they're looking at you. I said, okay, watch this. So I went over and I said, hi, hi. You, you people, are you, you all right? Having a good time? <laughs> I said, no kidding, really is a good, a good place, isn't it? <laughs> Finally, I had to say, look, I'm sorry. Oh, I've been cut off. <laughs> I said, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I'm putting you on. <laughs> <laughs> Love Foster Brooks. That's great. Al, He's do you my have, favorite. Al, do you have something, uh, another voice, something you've done for a looping job or a dubbing job or a commercial or? Well, first of all, I want to say that uh, Alan just took me all the way back home because, <laughs> hi, drunk men. It's like, hi, what's that language? <laughs> back home for that. You can find him there. We have a lot of That's local funny. drunks here, you know. Uh, yes, that's very. It was, it was very dear to my heart. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I think probably like one of the things that I've done that a lot of people kind. It's a she's a, a another one of these little characters, but she seems to be kind of popular and people love her. Is um, AFK from Hearthstone, and uh, it, she goes. Oh, are we still fighting? <laughs> and it's like she just this character comes in, and everyone else is like badasses. Um, and then this just she's just this. She eats cupcakes, <laughs> and she's just like this. She's very voluptuous, and she eats cupcakes. And I was like, that's me. Um, and I think I spent like forty minutes in the studio just going, just coming up with all these different little things. And apparently, someone dubbed it on YouTube. And there's like 17 different languages where somebody did AFK and that in 17 different languages. So that was really funny. Um, oh, <laughs> but wow, I also, wow. something that I did that uh, that other people might not know. It's actually a singing thing. Is that relevant? I don't know. Sure. Okay. Um, so when I first moved to LA, I, uh, I was actually a professional singer. I was a session vocalist in Scotland and then I was a singer when I got here. And so I went on this show, which no one will have seen, but it was on Fox and it played to like 15 million people. Um, it only had one season. Wasn't that good. <clears throat> um, but I, <laughs> I was Celine Dion. And the funniest part of this whole thing was at the time, people that I worked with worked for a company called Digital Domain, which is like a big visual effects company in LA. And uh, they had done the music video for My Heart Will Go On, the Celine Dion music video, because they also did the visual effects in Titanic. So they were able to get me the icebergs and the prow of the ship that Celine Dion stood on for that music video. <laughs> and so I'm out there and they dress, they put me in the dress. I sang My Heart Will Go On. They put me in the dress. They cut my hair. They bleached it. Like I just, I looked a lot like Celine Dion, which is frightening. But the best part of this was, well, <laughs> Sorry, let me rewind that. This was not the best part. That's terrible. Because <laughs> what I'm about to say is not good. So my grandfather, God rest his soul, had passed away during production. But the best part in the funny sense was that they kept cutting to me. They would ask me questions about my grandfather and then they'd cut to me and I'd be crying. And, one and they'd always said to me, you have to talk about how much you love Celine Dion. So this entire show, I look like a nutcase because I'm like, they're like, so El, blah, blah, blah. And, I'm, and they're like, so what do you think about, so, I saw your grandfather passed away. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, what do you think of Celine Dion? <laughs> I love Celine Dion. <laughs> so that's what I look like on this show, the entire thing. <laughs> so I'm like a nutcase for Celine Dion. Aww. And I did, I did sing as Celine Dion. So that was that's like, wonderful. Yeah. Let's go to the tape. <laughs> okay, John, have you got a... Uh... Well, not many people know this, but I was one of the original Supremes. <laughs> It'll be hard to tell. But no, um, you know, Al, we were talking pre-show. Uh, Al and I had done a lot of um, Walla for the Simpsons. So there's a lot of Simpson Wallas that we've done over the years. Uh, but I could say this now because the NBA is off. The new ride at, at uh, Disneyland, the Star Wars ride, you know, that whole big Star Wars thing. Um, I ended up doing a number of voices for a section of that ride. Like there's a main street there. So um, I did various voices. Um, cool. for the, the Rise of the Resistance one? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Dig it, dig it. Yeah, so I did, I did a couple of voices for that. So when the park opens in like 400 years, <laughs> you know, you could try and see if you could. Yeah. Um, 
to heal me. So, um, yeah, there's that. Um, I did, um, you know, I, I also did it. I did a couple of theme parks now. I did it actually as a theme park in Japan where they, um, they're doing a Kung Fu Panda ride. That's like the new, I guess. Oh, one of the new, in yeah. China? Is it in China? Yeah. I'm in that ride too. I mean, it's got to be the same one, right? Yes. DreamWorks. Yes. That's the exact same thing. So, yeah. yeah well, obviously, who do you play? It's the Patico. Um, yeah, so I did voices for, I was the master builder. I was a beaver. Yes. Yes, that's me. I am the master builder. I build all kinds of things for a price. Um, so, yeah, so that was, it was kind of an interesting foray into the theme park world. But so, there, yeah, there are voices that, uh, that, like I said, in a few hundred years, when you go to the theme parks again, you could probably hear. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, ladies, everything. That's interesting. Now, my next question I'm going to put to you, I want everybody to name drop at least one name of somebody you worked with in a voice session, a cartoon voice session that you were really impressed to be working with. Now, Alan, I remember you were in a couple of episodes of a show called Speed Buggy. Remember, do you remember Speed Buggy, Alan? Kind of. And Mel Blanc, Mel Blanc did a car in there. And everybody who's on Speed oh. Buggy has a story of Mel Blanc spitting on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. Michael Bell was Michael Bell was sitting next to Mel for the first half of the session, and then he knew that I worshipped Mel Blanc, uh -huh. so uh, he said to uh, uh, Gordon, I guess I don't know who it was, uh, uh, let uh, Oppenheimer take my place sitting next to Mel. He's a big fan. So then, of course, because then Mel went and, <laughs> and I got drenched, which is what Michael Bell wanted, you know. <laughs> Can I tell you an anecdote about Mel Blanc? Because I everybody knows. Please, that. sure. I will. I will tell everybody, by the way, that Michael Bell, I think, will be on the next one of these we do. Ah, okay. So, uh, so we were doing the Smurfs, uh, Mel and I, and Johnny Winters, and a whole bunch of wonderful people. Anyway, we were taking a break, and I was walking up the uh, in the hall with Mel. And we were talking, and uh, Barbera's coming towards us with two Japanese animators that he's showing around the studio. And so he says, "Oh, uh, uh, Alan, uh, uh, Mel, I want you to meet uh, these gentlemen uh, from Japan." And they go, "Oh, is who you with?" And uh, he said, "This is Alan Oppenheimer, and this is Mel Blank." And then Joe said to Mel, uh, Mel, uh, why don't you say something? And he went, eh, what's up, Doc? Oh, Bug Bunny, Bug Bunny. <laughs> Mel Blank meant nothing to him. But Bug Bunny did. <laughs> wow. The Smurfs had an amazing cast on it. And yeah. I used to, oh, at, for yeah. a while at Hanna-Barbera, I had an office right down the hall from where the recording studio was. And at any given time, most of the writers in the building were in my office plotting against management. And when the sessions finished, Jonathan Winters, who was always seeking an audience, would walk into my office and I would yeah. say something to him like, oh, you're here to fix the plumbing? And he'd become a plumber and we'd talk about plumbing for 40 minutes. And he, <laughs> he would do all this stuff. You must have yeah. been working with him. He must have entertained you enormously apart from well, actually first, doing the show. Well, the first time he was on the show, uh, he did 20 minutes stand up sitting down. And then Gordon said, okay, we have to go on. So the next time he was on the show, uh, he did 10 minutes. And the third time Gordon said, we don't have time, John. We have to move right along here. <laughs> he was wonderful. Yeah. Alan, you yeah. voiced a Vanity Smurf and, and who yeah. else? Well, but incidentals, but I voiced yeah. Vanity yeah. on that show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Vanity Smurf. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm so pretty. Oh. Yeah. Always with his mirror. Oh, he started yeah. out, I was doing Jack Benny, but then he became a little light in the loafers after a while. <laughs> Alan, were those always I, full sessions, full, uh, 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 all the actors were present for those? Yeah. That must have been yeah. fun. That must have been it fun. It was. It was great fun. Yeah. June Ferre mm -hmm. was on that. And uh, uh, Michael, Hamilton Camp. You remember Hamilton yes, Camp? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, funny man. And you had, and, you uh, had Paul, uh, Paul Winchell. Paul yeah. Winchell. Oh yeah. And, Jeez, and you had, and you had Don Messick. You had Lucille Bliss. Mm -hmm. and you That's had right. uh, uh, Michael Bell was in a lot of those. And yeah. um, 
Boy, I should know all my Smurfs. Lucille played uh, Smurfette, mm -hmm. and she dressed as Smurfette the rest of her life. <laughs> <laughs> she wore little blue costumes, mm -hmm. even in civilian life. I saw, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. saw her walking on the freeway one time as Smurfette. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Allison, tell us some name. Drop somebody you were in a session with that you that you were impressed to be working with. Well, I, so what's funny is John mentioned that um, theme park ride and Steve Hickner was directing. So of the B movie and like a million other things. So it was like, you know, you just show up knowing nothing about the session and you walk in and this, you know, iconic director is there and you just, and he sits just like, we finished in like seven minutes or something. And he just sat down and wanted to talk. And I was just like, oh my God, okay, cool. No, I was like, it was, it was really, it's just an honor to yeah. get to hear more about his life story and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Jason, who'd you, who'd you work with that you were excited to work with? It's a, it's a tough question, Mark, because I'm, I'm excited and impressed with everybody That's true. that I work with, even in, everyone in this, this room here. Uh, I mean, uh, Welker, you know, is, is a, a legend, you know, in, in my eyes and uh, Michael Bell, when I get to work, I worked with Michael Bell uh, in live action for, a voiceover and uh and i knew exactly who he was and uh he actually and he and i explained my my desire to get into more voiceover and he gave me a snorks script to learn oh. um but the, i'll go i'll talk about the first my first cartoon ever i was 12 years old and i booked uh disney's adventures of the disney's adventures of the gummy bears mm -hmm. and i booked it because the other i replaced a kid because he went through puberty he didn't sound like a kid anymore <laughs> so i auditioned i booked it <laughs> and I go to this room in my first cartoon. I had no idea how the process wa was. And, and, uh, and in the room is uh, June Ferre and uh, Corey Burton, uh, Brian Cummings, uh, and Lorenzo Music. Now, oh, yeah. I it was a huge, I still I'm a huge Garfield fan, you know, growing up. Uh, and I had all the books and I watched all the specials. I remember like, there wasn't a lot of programming for kids back then. We didn't have like Cartoon Network. So you have to wait for like sometimes on a Thursday night, there would be like a, 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 Saturday, a Thursday night special and you knew it was something for like yeah, kids. Yeah. Yep. So they do the, these making ofs uh, like behind the scenes of Garfield and they would talk to everybody, but they would never show Lorenzo's face. He'd always be in silhouette and I was like, why? That's so crazy. So getting to like meet him and see him just completely blew my mind. Uh, I had him autograph uh, a Garfield book for me, and he drew a like a a uh, sort of like a a portrait of himself. He's like, oh, I've never done that before, uh, uh, but extremely impressed working with everybody. I was this is how green I was, uh, you know. I, I was trained as an actor, not as a voice actor, but how you know to act. And when you act with another actor, you have to look them in the eyes. So in our session, we had two rows, kind of like a like a small plane, two rows next to each other, and I was in the very front row. And so every time it was my line, I would turn around and talk to the other actor behind me. <laughs> and they're like, uh, Jason, you gotta, you know, please be on the mic. Uh, uh, but yeah, being in that room, I, I knew who June Foray was. Uh, and uh, and at, after we were all done, Paul Winchell would come in and do his stuff separately. And I had to stay because I had to do school. And he would just like knock it out of the park, one take every time. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, it was good, good memories. Wonderful. Yeah. I, I grew up on Paul Winchell. Uh, he was my one of my heroes when I was a kid. Yeah. I have in my living room downstairs, I have exact working replicas of Jerry Mahoney and Knucklehead Smith. Nice, nice. And every time I go in there and see them sitting on the couch, I smile. And every time my cleaning lady goes in there, she screams. <laughs> <laughs> very, very sad that way. Uh, Mark, Al, yeah. a, a writer that I worked with gave me uh, a video, a VHS, or let me borrow a VHS of uh, Paul Winchell's How to Be a Ventriloquist tape. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. And it showed like old, for, like old movies that he was in. It was like this dark movie where it's like, and he's talking with this, this, uh, this dummy. It's, 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 uh, it's very intense. And then he explains like how to make your voice sound like it's coming from upstairs and downstairs. Oh yeah. He was God. an amazing man. I got to know him fairly well over the years. And it was a very strange thing because I could remember when I was four or five years old, watching him on Circus Time with Jerry Mahoney and Knucklehead doing a kid's show. And then flash forward, and one day I'm at his apartment with a bunch of guys, and he brings up Jerry or Knucklehead, and he does a routine that would have made Larry Flint blush. 
the filthiest uh, <laughs> tea you ever had. And I thought, oh, I've grown up too fast here. <laughs> Knuckle, knucklehead is saying the F word. No, that's not. Uh, and his lips didn't do what he did it. In fact, in fact, we one time we had a uh, a Garfield session where in the morning we had Buddy Hackett. This is on the Garfield and Friends show. Jason was on the Garfield show, which is a separate program. But on the Garfield and Friends show, we had Buddy Hackett. In, and Buddy Hackett came in and told us three dirty jokes before we started. And that afternoon, Paul Winchell came in and Paul told us the same three dirty jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and and we had we pretended like we hadn't heard them before. We all laughed at them and such. And Paul told them better than Buddy, actually. And, <laughs> and, and, and Paul told two without his mouth moving. Anyway, it was amazing. Such. Wow. Um, uh, Al, who have you worked with that's impressed you? Uh, well, first of all, I just like to say that uh, I think the echo has gone, right? I, it's we still it's got still some there. weird noises picking oh, up from someplace. I I unplugged. Uh, I had a light plugged in, and I unplugged it, and I thought it went. So I was gonna face up to that because I'm a very, very honest Scott. That that <laughs> that might might have been it, but anyway. Um. So I, I have a couple. Uh. I for I mean I've told this. Okay. First of all. You put me on my very first voiceover panel ever, and it was at WonderCon. Was this was Cartoon Voices at WonderCon, and you put me on with Bill Farmer, which was oh. like <laughs> my dad. Yes, so, <laughs> so that was like hi. Um, and then um, uh, I've told this story before, but it's very wonderful. Um, when I first moved to LA, like I said, I was a singer, but I um, managed to get into this project and I did a voice. I, I I voiced this little acorn. Her name was Amanda Acorn and it's actually for Montessori educational videos. Um, and she's really cute and she, her name is Amanda. Come on and learn along. You know, she's this little kid. And I get into the studio because we're doing an album alongside the the, the actual like voiceover video, uh, voiceover, uh, uh, and it's Richard Chairman is doing nice. all the music. Richard Chairman yeah, yeah. is doing all the music. And I'm just like, Richard, I, so as a singer, I got to work with Richard Sherman. And I also amazing. got to work on a voice project that had the music with Richard Sherman. Uh, so that was amazing. Um, but I did also tell this funny story and it has to be told again. I did uh, Star Trek The Force Awakens. I did ADR and looping for that. Um, and uh, that was funny because J.J. Uh, Abrams walked in the room, I almost died. And I also got to work with Fred Tatashore. Uh, which was incredible. And actually, that's the wrong story. Sorry. Uh, the story I did one was uh, the Rob Reiner one. The Rob Reiner one I told at the last, when we did Comic-Con, uh, I did voiceover for a movie called Shock and Awe. And I walked in and I didn't know, they hadn't told me what it was. And I walked in and Rob Reiner was my director. And they put me in the middle of the room and it's like, you know, ADR, that's like the big screen and I'm in the middle of the room and the whole panel of people, the very important people with Rob Reiner are behind me. And I did tell this story before and it has to be told again because it's hilarious. Um, I remember I was very, very nervous because it was Rob Reiner. And all I can remember about that session is that my ass cheeks were quivering. <laughs> I was so nervous and they were all behind me. And so their entire impression of me must have been my butt just going like this, jiggling. <laughs> So uh, that's my Rob Reiner story. <laughs> and the story Great. of my butt. Wow. Yeah. Because I always have to get a button because I'm Scottish. So that's what happens. Is that on your resume, special skills? Yeah. <laughs> I have a, a jiggling, I have a, I have a nervous butt. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> you just got the part. <laughs> John, John, who have you got? Who have you worked with that you've been really impressed to work with? I'm, I'm jiggling now myself. <laughs> <laughs> He's worked with my butt. I have, I have, in a, in a nice way. I mean, um, you know, I gotta, I gotta echo what was said earlier by Jason. It's like uh, most of the sessions that I've gone into, I've pretty much been in some level of shock and awe. Um, and I know the Winchell name keeps being brought up, but that's on my list too. When I worked at Hanna Barbera for the first time, and um, we were doing a, a, a reboot of the Wacky Racers uh, series, that's where I did the Wally Gator voice. And, you know, Winchell was there and Messick was there and, and Melville was there. And I, I was kind of speechless because, you know, I had grown up with these people, you know, like you were talking about the Jerry Mahoney show. I watched that, you know, religiously. You know, these were these were like my, my childhood. These were my babysitters. So there was a level of awe about that, that I just I just wanted to make sure I got the words out properly on the script. And then basically I just I was I just sat and I watched because. You know, it's a weird thing, this business that we're in, 
to some, I mean, in a lot of, in a lot of ways, but you know, we grow up with certain influences and then by the grace of God, we get a chance to work with them, you know, and suddenly, you know, reality and fantasy, it just mm -hmm. is like the lines begin to blur. Yeah, Chuck man. McCann is another name that comes to mind. I did a series with Chuck McCann. Mm -hmm. As a child, I grew up with him in New York watching his kids show, you know, so there's that, there is that level of awe with, with those people, I guess, because that's where it all kind of started in the beginning. You know, these people were, were uh, babysitters and teachers and, um, and mentors in, in, in some way, shape or form. So that's my long winded speech. And I thank you fellow Americans. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for those stories. Now, John, while we got you here. Um, well, you got me here. I'm, I'm sequestered. <laughs> In, 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 in previous in previous <laughs> panels here, people have talking about talked about improv training being very good for voice actors. John is in a couple of improv troops, particularly the Spolin Players, which I've seen a few times, which is one of the best improv troops I've ever seen. How long have you been doing that kind of stuff, John? Uh, since since we they've been writing on walls in caves. <laughs> I've been with them probably about 20 years, and I'm the baby of the bunch. They're, you know, they're. You got, uh, you got uh, uh, Jim Stahl is in there, and Anna Mathias. And tell, who else is it? Pat. Pat. Uh, uh, Edie McClurg, uh, Danny Mand, uh, uh, David McCarran. Uh, we have like a kind of a rotational. There's like a magnificent seven of people that we kind of do, you know, on a regular basis. And then we have other people that come in and, uh, and work from time to time, scheduling, uh, you know, allowed. Is that the what one Pat Music is in, John? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 What, what, what have you learned in that that has helped you as a voice actor? Always make sure your fly is up before you go on stage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Anything about, else? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, improv, I mean, it's, it's very much about moment to moment. And it's very much about working with your intuitive self as opposed to the preconceived notions I mean, a lot of us, I mean, look, we're all guilty. When we walk into a scene, whatever it may be, we have everything figured out. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it this way. You know, and sometimes we miss the actual moment that's happening. Mm -hmm. So when working the, the games and, and, and really practicing them, it kind of helps for us to be in the moment and react off of our fellow players, you know. And that was the beauty of when we all did recording sessions as a group. You know, now mm -hmm. everything is very individual because yeah. of schedules. But back in the old days of voiceover, when we were doing what was like a radio show, because we had everybody there, you know, somebody would deliver a line and I would, you know, you'd be able to play off that line a little bit more because, you know, you're working in the moment. How often have you been either in a scene on in, an, in practice or on a stage and you've invented a new character on the spot? You suddenly invent a brand new dialect or a brand new character you never knew was in you. You know, I, I don't, I keep my calculator at home when it comes to that. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's very interesting because when you're in the moment and you're doing, a, you know, we have so much references inside of us because we're constantly picking up voices every day without even realizing it, you know? So there's stuff that's already in there. And then sometimes we'll start to do a voice. And then there's this other part of the brain that goes, you know, that sounds like, well, that reminds me of, and then sometimes if you track that, and you just kind of keep going into that, suddenly it morphs into something else. So definitely more than three times I think that's happened to me in my life. <laughs> definitely more than three. Well, I've come to see them a few times, and it's quite amazing, it's particularly when you realize when somebody says something and you laugh at it, and you can see the actor is kind of laughing at the same time when try, trying to keep character because he didn't realize, he didn't think of what he said before he said it. It mm -hmm. just kind of happened miraculously and he's as surprised but what came out of his mouth as you are well that happens a lot yeah and, and and a lot of it is about listening and really listening to oh. <laughs> oh. gotta go oh, for the way. cheap jokes because we're not getting paid folks <laughs> cheap jokes <laughs> one of the main things that the uh, the swollen improv games teach you is listening yeah. and paying attention and staying with the scene, and when you're added to a, if you're added to a scene, you don't negate the scene. You you add to the scene. You you keep going. You you don't you don't say you don't say no and correct people. You come on and and keep the scene flowing. 
And that's a very good trait for any actor to learn it. Uh, you don't have to use it in improv classes. It's a good, it's a good trait. It's, it's a thing that, that every actor should know. Yeah, well, I think any of the any of the teachings, you know, the studios or whatever else, it is. I mean, at the end of the day, it's very much about listening, you know, to to your to your partner in the scene. So it, uh, listening plays a a, a big part. Um, and you know, like I said, going moment to moment. And um, uh, th there's a simple rule, and I think it should be applied in life. It's just you know what, take care of your neighbor. That's another thing that happens in acting, and I believe should happen in the world. It's like when you're in a scene with your partner, make your partner look better. Take care of your partner. Because the more you take care of your partner, the better you're going to look. And I think that's very applicable in all areas of life. So, Alan, Alan, when you were starting out, did you who did you study with anybody interesting acting wise? What kind of what kind I of went to, well, I went to Carnegie Tech and I learned a lot there. But then after uh, then I spent six weeks at the Neighborhood Playhouse with Charlie Conrad. And I learned more in that six weeks about listening, John, listening. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there on in, I was a better actor when I, I learned how to listen. Uh, um, I was with a Playwrights Theater Club in Chicago before it became Second City. Oh. Like they were just starting, just starting. Paul Sills gave me his room in the, in the restaurant to stay in. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was... Uh, um, Elaine May and, uh, and Zora Lampert and uh, oh, Ed Asner there. Ed Asner Shaley, was there. Shaley then, Berman? Huh? Was Shaley Berman part of that? No, that, he was after after I was there. But I was only there one month because I was from New York and I was freezing in the spaghetti <laughs> restaurant with a broken window in February. Uh, so I had to leave and go back to New York. But there was a guy there, uh, Shepard. What was his name? He started the second city in St. Louis. The... Uh, Richmond anyway, Shepherd. he's Richmond, Richmond Shepherd. Huh? Was it been. Richmond Shepherd? Could have been. He said to me, uh, "I'd never done improv. I didn't even know what the word meant." He said to me, uh, "I'm going to start a, uh, an improv company in in St. Louis, and when it does, I want you to join it." I said, "I don't. I don't know how to do improv. I just do scripts. I don't know how to do that." So two years later, I'm walking on Fifth Avenue, and he's coming towards me. He says, geez, am I glad to see you. I told you, I've got this company I'm starting in St. Louis. I want you to join it. And I said, I don't know how to do it. improv. <laughs> I do now. I wish I'd said yes. <laughs> but it's, it's fantastic, you know. But most people, I have to tell you, John, that I've seen improv, don't listen to the other person. Mm -hmm. They are preconceived. They already know what they're going to say, and they don't bounce off of the other people. And I've uh, most of what I've seen in improv is nice town. And maybe I've seen the wrong things. I, I thought, well, you're not doing it. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. What you just described. You're not really listening. You know what you're going to say before you say it. And well, so. I have to stay with the scripts right now. <laughs> you, know, you know, one of the best things that ever happened in the world of improv, and one of the worst, was Saturday Night Live. Because yeah. an awful lot of people went to improv training, not because yeah. they wanted to learn, but because they wanted to develop a couple of characters that could get them on a mm -hmm. Saturday Night Live or a show like that and get Chevy yeah. Chase's contract or Chevy mm -hmm. Chase's career. Or something <laughs> like and, and there were people at the Groundlings. Groundlings is a wonderful local improv troupe but there were a lot of people there who were uh not didn't understand improv or weren't, they weren't interested in it they were interested in in showcasing their acting mm. they get discovered for something and uh, of course i'm i'm in, i'm in, uh, i'm in, indebted my whole life to nichols and may i just think they were the best wow and yeah you all know nichols and may i saw them on broadway with their act yeah. if you can get a dvd of it or a cd whatever you gotta listen to it it's brilliant. It's just brilliant. The the mm. three the three most impressive improv groups that I've seen in well four actually I'll tell you four. There's the black version which our friend Phil Lamar who's on one of these was in. There's a thing called Insta Play which yes is, yeah. is very wonderful with Bill Steinkellner and, yeah. and Sherry Steinkellner and John Stark and Deanna Oliver. There's a, a troupe that Alan uh, that um, Dan Castellaneta does it does an improv from time to time i don't think it's on a regular schedule but it's quite wonderful and then there's the spolen players which 
which John is in. You're not performing now, I assume, because of the uh, the virus. But uh, well, we're actually, but we're we're workshopping via Zoom. Believe it or not, really. Oh, great! We're great. doing we're doing workshops with the group, and we're doing it in Zoom. Um, we actually, I, they're going to try and do a. I think there's a festival coming up September. They're going to do it online. They're going to do a Zoom improv show. So I don't know what that's going to be like, but uh, you know, that's it's going to be a new experience. That well, was Paul Sill's mother, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't she Paul Sill's Viola. mother? Viola. Viola. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Viola let's, Yeah. Let's let's do a scene. Let's do a let's do a play for these people here. You all have your scripts. All right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, I'm going to assign. Now, these actors have not seen this script before. They promised to get their word of honor. They wouldn't read it in advance. I'm going to assign the roles, then give them not enough time to read. To mark their lines, and then and then we will have them. This is now. This is largely improv. You can do not have to follow the words on the page. You can change them all you want. You can change voices in the middle of the show if you want. Uh, Alan, I'm going to have you be the narrator, and you can read. I'd like you to try to read every line with a different emphasis. A different. Be be scared in one. Be frightened. Be 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 happy. Be snooty in one. Just Alan, just be, you're going to be the narrator. Uh, okay. This is the story of three bears, by the way. And uh, Allison, you are Goldilocks. Okay. Jason, you are the baby bear. L, you are the mother and your mama bear. And John, you are Papa Bear. Now, <laughs> I'll give you all a couple minutes here to uh, to read your to look your scripts over and mark your mark your parts. In the meantime, I'm going to have a little conference here with the with the with the uh, people watching us. Uh, this is the spot where I do a little commercial in these panels where I warn people that in this world now, there are some wonderful voice coaches and voice teachers, some really great folks who can help you towards a career. And there are also some people who are very predatory, who will teach you nothing and charge you a fortune for it. Mm -hmm. uh, do not assume that just because someone has a website or has a few impressive sounding credits that they know how to teach it, that they need to teach voices. Uh, there are good ones. There are strange yeah. noises being heard in the background too, also. <laughs> but uh, I have encountered a few people lately who these are heartbreaking stories of someone who invested all the money they had or all the money their parents could scrape together for them and took lessons mm -hmm. that got them nowhere near their goals. Uh, oh, at almost every comic convention I do after we do the voice panel, someone comes up to me and says, Listen, I just gave eight thousand dollars to this guy, and he promised that he would give me Frank Welker's career. And now he says I need to give him more money for more lessons and such. And uh, just be cautious. I mean, it it it's very frustrating sometimes to see how the dreams of young talent will can be exploited by people who really should be teaching this stuff. There are wonderful voice teachers out there, and and look for the people who are um, actually working. The actors you know are working. Some of, some of them do teach. The people who are working constantly in the business, if you want to be in the business, you should know who the top people are who perform. And if you you can reach most of these people through social media, we'll give you some contacts for the people here later. Um, it wouldn't hurt before you sign up with uh, a voice coach, give them a lot of money to check the, out with, with somebody who's actually in the business. If you drop an email to some of these folks and say, hey, have you heard of this voice coach? And they say, never, you might be wary. That is the end of my little sermon here. Let's get back to our cast. Cast, are you ready? I hope you're not. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Alan has the first line here. This is the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And remember, you can change voices anytime you feel like. You can change dialogue anytime you feel like. Um, and we will start with Mr. Oppenheimer and line one. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She was called that because she had golden locks of hair. And she was very beautiful. Hello, my name is Goldilocks. I'm called that because I have a golden lock of hair and I'm very beautiful. Hmm. Isn't she stupid? 
<laughs> One day she told her mother she was going to take a walk in the woods, and her mother gave her a warning. Mother of mine, I'm going to take a walk in the woods. Do not go into North Woods, my dear. There are wild animals in the North Woods, and they like to eat little girls, especially stupid little girls who think their golden lock of hair make them special. It does not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Mother dear. I will not stray into the North Woods. But the trouble with Goldilocks was that she never listened to her mother, and it often got her into trouble. <laughs> so on her walk, she came across a sign. What does that sign say? <laughs> Warning. Now entering North what? Little girls beware. Oh, I'm sure they won't bother me. <laughs> la, 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 She continued walking on her way to a path that would take her right past a big wooden house. In that house, there lived three bears. A papa bear. I can't hear you, All Papa right. Bear. I said, hey, Ma, when's the rest <laughs> going to be ready? I'm starving. And there was also a Mama Bear. Yo, I'm serving it right now, Papa. Sit your ass down at the table and I'll give you a big steaming bowl of my delicious porridge. Yeah. Porridge again? Wait, wait, hold on a minute. I thought you loved my porridge. I eat your porridge. But that doesn't mean I love your porridge. I'll eat it, but I don't love it. I'll eat it, but I don't love it. And lastly, there was their son, who was known as Baby Bear because he was a baby bear. Oh, my gosh. You just keep droning on and on. I'm only a baby for a second. Yeah, let me at Yes. Yes. Oh, I lost my place already. Mom, you know, Mama does make the most delicious porridge. Just give me some of that. You see that? Yes, stupid old man. Someone here appreciates my cooking. Aye, I'll give you this. It looks hard, but I can't wait. <gasps> oh, my porridge is way too hard. Come here, let me try it. <laughs> it tastes like crap. It's way too hot. By the time this porridge cools down enough to eat, we'll starve to death. Yeah, you know, for once, Papa Bear's right. Nonsense, my child. Say ten Hail Marys and we'll be just fine. <laughs> I also know exactly what to do. I have all the answers. We'll go for a walk in the woods. Yes, that's what we'll do. We'll perambulate. Even though we're social distancing, we shall walk in the woods and we won't wear a mask. No. And by the time we get back, that porridge will be perfect. We might be dead, but the porridge will be good. Yes, and they weren't dead. No, no. So they just did what they did, you know. <laughs> they went for a walk in the woods. And being very trusting bears, they didn't even think to lock the front door. I don't even know why we always have to eat porridge in the first place. How about some real food once in a while? Maybe a bagel, a small nosh, some stuffed dinner. <laughs> well, I do declare. I thought you love my porridge. I love porridge. Quiet, son. Let me tell you what real food is, Mama. So a few minutes later, who should wander past their house but Goldilocks? Like, I guess I'm in a wrong turn. I should go that way. No. Wait, maybe I should go this way. Uh, that way. Oh my god, my phone's not working. What the fuck? Okay. I'm lost in the forest. I'm totally lost. I'm hopelessly lost and no one will ever find me. And oh my god. I know who's gonna find me. A bear! A bear's gonna make me and a bear's gonna eat me and I can't even call my boy Reddit. Maybe the people in this house will help me. Hello? Yes. Hello? Hello. 
So she ran to the front door and knocked, but no one answered. In fact, the door slowly opened on its own. Well, they can't blame me for that. Hello? Anybody here? Anybody? Huh? Is anyone here? I'm uh, lost in the forest and I haven't had anything to eat. I'm tired, I'm hungry, and uh... Hey, is that porridge? That's my favorite food, yeah. Smells like porridge. Well, that's a girl who's got a good nose, huh? So her nose led her to the dining room where she found the three bowls left there by the three bears. I sure hope they don't mind whoever owns this house if I just, you know, sit and eat a little bit. <laughs> oh! Oh! This porridge is too hot. Well, oh, maybe this bowl of... Ooh! Ooh, this porridge is too cold. Maybe the third bowl? Mm, oh! You know what? This porridge is just right. Boy, I sure do talk to myself a lot. <laughs> just a little. She gobbled down every last bite of porridge. <clears throat> and then she sparkled into the living room and she sat down in Papa Bear's chair. Oh, what'd they put in that porridge? Ah, <sighs> oh, this chair's hard. Huh. So she tried sitting in Mama Bear's chair. Ah, oh, this chair is too soft. Finally, finally, she tried sitting in, <laughs> in Baby Bear's chair. Ah, oh, this chair is just right. On oh. her talkers. Oh no, I broke that cute little chair. I need to find some place to lie down. She staggered into the bedroom where she found three beds. She decided to lie down on the biggest bed, which was Papa Bear's bed. Ah, dude, this bed is too hard. So she switched to the next largest bed, which was Mama Bear's bed. No, this bed is too soft. <laughs> and finally, she lay down on the smallest bed, which was Baby Bear's bed. Hiya, baby. <laughs> and this bed is just white. And as she was fast asleep, the three bears were returning home. Oh, boa, boa, boa. Why do we even have to have porridge for lunch? <laughs> um, like, totally hold up. I think somebody broke my chair. I'm really concerned. And you know what? We always have porridge for lunch, Papa, so you just can it, okay? <laughs> I love porridge. That's because it's all you have eaten here, son. Where do you roll, then? You get to taste some of the finest things in life. Papa, did you lock the door when we left? Papa, did you lock it? <laughs> You know you never locked the door, Mama. Why did you ask? Because it's open. It's wide open. Like all the way open. Like somebody walked right in while we were away. And what if it was some dastardly criminal who wants to steal our porridge? It's gluten-free, for Christ's sake. <laughs> well, he's welcome to mine, Pally. Well, what if it's a monster? A monster with... He's 20 feet tall and covered with green fur with rows and rows of razor sharp teeth. Oh no. No. <laughs> what if it's the kind that can tear a bear limb from limb and leave its body lifeless on the ground like an old rug in front of a fireplace? Well, it's still welcome to my porridge. <laughs> <laughs> I look like Penelope Cruz. Lead the way into the house, puppy. But take it real slow and be real careful. You know I like it like that. Mm. <laughs> Cautiously, they entered their house and an ominous feeling of dread hung low in the atmosphere as they made their way to the dining room. That was where they saw it. Gasp of horror! I made a duty! 
<laughs> Someone's been eating my porridge. <laughs> I think you got a line, Mama. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You oh. basically just say the same thing he does, Mommy, and then I, am, I repeat it after you. Oh, oh, wait. I'm very alarmed. Oh, Papa, look over there. No, In you're the on, living room. You're no. 66. 66. Oh. oh, my God. I just ruined the whole show. <laughs> I think you should fire me. Mine? Someone's been eating my porridge. That's why I didn't know. Oh, someone's been eating my porridge. And whoever it is is eating it all up. <laughs> hey, Papa. <laughs> Check it out over there in the living room. Your rocking chair is rocking all by itself. It's haunted. It's like a toothpick on an orange. No. <laughs> Boy, you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. Uh, <laughs> the seat is warm. Someone's been sitting in my chair. Oh, no. Someone's been sitting in my chair. Yeah, hey, would you know? Someone's been sitting in my chair, too. And they broke it all the blooming places. <laughs> What's in our house? Is it a ghost? Is it a monster? Is it a demon spirit? It's Superman! No. Um, <laughs> relax, both ears. You're letting your imagination get the best of you. An empty bowl of porridge and a broken chair doesn't mean there's a monster in the house. <laughs> But 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 that does let me out of here. Wow! Now <laughs> step. Do I have to have all the courage in this family? Are you going to be terrible role models for me, your young and impressionable son? If there's a monster here, we have to find it, face it, and then. Defecate. No, it's just defeat. <laughs> defeat. Defeat. My son is right. He's correct, even. This is a moment that requires courage. <laughs> oh, no. But that ghastly sound was coming from the bedroom. Follow me. <laughs> Now, slowly, cautiously, they tiptoed into the bedroom where they found... Well, it appears to me that someone has been sleeping in my bed. Yes, by the chalk outline around that body, I would say someone is most definitely sleeping in that bed. Wow, someone's been sleeping in my bed... She's sleeping in it right now, and it's not even my birthday. Guys! No, I hear somebody. Who's here? Who's uh yeah. Well, you know what happened. The skull the Goldilocks screamed. <laughs> she ran from the bear's house and all through the woods back to her home. Yeah, she never disobeyed her mother, and she never went into the woods again. <laughs> yes, yes. And as for the three little bears, from then on, they kept their doors locked. Oh, oh, and Mama Bear learned how to cook something, thank God, beside porridge. <laughs> Yo, for dinner tonight, I'm going to make a roast chicken, and you're going to eat it. Finally. Stuffed with porridge. <laughs> How you like them apples? Oh, bang, zoom! One of these days, honey! To the moon! To the moon! Yeah, while well, you're I making the it. porridge, I'm going to instill a bunch of ring cam so that shit doesn't come in our house again. I'll be back <laughs> at six. Thank you, Cass. Oh, my God. You guys are ridiculous. You guys are awesome. Crazy. Yeah. Hey, uh, Alan, I wonder how he's going to play with the six second delay. Uh, yeah, Alan, your your picture is freezing up a little bit at the moment. You have, you you don't really look that that lost. <laughs> you have a you have a frozen lost look on your face at the moment. Who it'll, me? It'll unfreeze. Yes, it'll unfreeze in a moment here. There you go. Okay, uh, you're back. All right. Okay. Thank you, Cass. Uh, in case you can't figure it out, folks at home, 
uh, anything that was funny in that script, these people put their uh, improvising and ad-libbing and things like that. I think it's I'm looking at the thing, chat room. John, we had a chat question here uh, from somebody in the chat room. John, did you just imitate Snagglepuss? No, you were doing the original. You were doing Bert Lahr, <laughs> who was imitating, uh, Snagglepuss was imitating. Uh, and I also congratulate you on the finest Lou Costello we've had in, uh, <laughs> in much time in, in these things. And, yeah, thank you, sir. I thank you. And I think you owe Shep Howard's estate royalties on some of the, the gas. <laughs> People, Google these names for those of you who are not aware of them. <laughs> You will find, by, though, you will find, I think, that cartoon fans know a lot of these names. They're more likely to know some of these people than the average folks because uh, cartoons are kind of timeless. Sure. I used to, you know, occasionally do chalk talks at elementary schools, and there were nine-year-old kids doing impressions of Jerry Colonna, but they were really doing Bugs Bunny doing Jerry Colonna because they wow. watched those cartoons so much uh, cast. Um how do you feel these days about recording alone, everyone? You know, you used to get into studios. Jason, since he moved to Nashville, doesn't get to work with other people as much as he used to, I guess. Uh, and, sad, uh, eh? Yeah, because we had some wonderful sessions. Uh, we did the Garfield show. J Jason was on that. We had uh, Frank Welker, of course, and Greg Berger, and Lorraine Newman a lot. And, Freeberg, uh, June Foray, yeah, you brought June, June in June for a couple Foray, of seconds? Yeah. Yeah, we, we uh, I like hiring older actors a lot for things like that. Marvin Kaplan we had in the show, and Jack Riley, and we had one episode with Rose Marie. Uh, wow. We actually had you know Ro Rose Marie from the Dick Van Dyke Show, a person I loved watching when I was younger, and uh, and I got to work with a lot of these people. Uh, I was very pl pleased that I got to work with Dawes Butler and Mel Blanc and people like that. And, and uh, uh, and and I've never really encountered anybody who's a real problem. Most voiced actors are very nice. They're very professional. Alan, haven't you found that to be the case in voice sessions? Absolutely. Can, can, yeah, but can, you know, I'm surprised. I, I didn't know that they were breaking up and you re record separately. I thought it was always a full cast or as close as comfortable. I had no idea that they were now breaking up into individuals or pairs. Why are they doing that? Well, because there's 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 a thing called a virus around, and a lot of people oh, don't want to leave their house. Well, they were doing this beforehand too, yeah. man. I mean, it was well, all no, like I'm talking about scheduling. That. Well, theatrical yeah, that. theatrical animation is usually done in splits. Alan, when you did Toy Story four, you were probably not with the whole company. You were probably recording <laughs> no, alone, just, alone, right? Just me. And yeah. now I'm doing uh, I'm doing He Man, the, the the other version, not playing Skeletor, but another part, Moss Man, and they bring me in and. And they get me out of the way fast, which is what I love. I don't want to sit there for four hours and then come in and do one scene. So that's fine, but it's just, you know, a small portion. But uh, I would hate to have done uh, He-Man without John Irwin or without, uh, uh, you know, all those people, Wendy, all those people. Uh, as a matter of fact, there was a time, I got to tell you, in the mid-'80s, when I was working two days in London and two days here back and forth, and then I would have to come in, and they would play the feed line, and then I would record the answer to it. But uh, as a, a matter of policy, I, I, I can't imagine that being the, the top of the, the, you get the best performance. I can't believe that. Yeah, agreed. Well, you have a problem there. You know, it's, it's, in some shows, uh, they like the idea of it, people recording people separately so they can edit all the speeches and they can figure out the pauses between speeches. And such, I think I think a lot of cartoon shows are over edited. The voice tracks are over edited, and we lose sometimes the natural timing of the actors. Uh, I, yeah, on, I, I, on the Garfield show, Jason will tell you we I used to let actors interrupt each other and step on each other's lines mm -hmm. instead of leaving pauses mm -hmm. between for editing, because I mm -hmm. and they would come to me and they'd say, "Well, now we can't separate those two speeches," and I'd say, "That's the idea. Yeah. I don't." Want I don't want to separate the speeches. I want them married together. Yeah, especially in comedy, right? Because comedy, mm -hmm. there's a certain rhythm to it, and you, and if you break up like even a, a half a second of of a, a joke delivery that was overlapped, it could ruin mm -hmm. it could ruin the joke. Yeah, they, sometimes they want to <coughs> edit the timing of the actors to match the animation. Yeah, and it's more important to get the timing of the actors of the dial pure. That is why 
the way these software is, is configured, um, when there is a lack of, of continuity here for the, the, the uh, download here, Alan's picture was freezing up. Did you stop talking? I'm, I'm, can you hear me, Alan? I don't see your mouth moving, Mark. Oh, I'm, 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 the other people hear me? Yeah. Did I, Hello. Okay. Um, uh, well, give it a minute, Alan. It will unfreeze. Oh. I, I am there. <laughs> not You're there now. Yes. Me. Okay. Uh, but the, the point is that they will sacrifice the video and keep the audio intact to the extent possible. And if there's a shortage of bandwidth, they want to keep the audio intact because the picture can freeze up and you can still guess guess what's happening. But if the dialogue starts cutting out, then you don't you lose the track of that. Um, let me ask everybody here also. Um, uh, and you don't have to mention names if you don't want to. Uh, you've had some bad sessions. You've had occasionally sessions where you were mistreated. You've had occasions where they made you yell a lot, especially in video games. How, uh, who, who here has done a video game where they were there all day and all night doing 8,000 different ways to die? Yeah, Jason, you want to talk about that a little bit? <coughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, those are kind of fun for me, actually. I mean, it's... Uh, it, it's all part of it. Uh, uh, it. It's it's. I like challenges, you know, and that's definitely a challenge. I remember doing a, a particular video game session where they had a instead of just a stationary microphone, they had a boom operator, and that's usually they use those guys on on uh, live action like film sets. The guy is holding the the boom out, pulling the mic in front of you. So I was free to move around, <laughs> roll to the ground if I wanted to, and it was his job to you know keep me. Uh, uh, keep me sounding good. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you pace yourself. You gotta, I remember I was working with a guy, it was that same session. The, the, the director was also a musician and he, he told me, he's like, you know, when you scream, you know, you got, don't do it from the throat, do it from the diaphragm. You know, uh, it'll, it'll save your, your voice a whole lot better. And, uh, and that I remembered that. And then I, you know, I, I do yoga and there's like breathing exercise with that, that i found is like really, really helped. So I don't consider the video game stuff like really, we're like horrendous sessions. Um, They're exhausting, I, um, yeah. But sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, El. Oh, I was just sorry. I, I was just going to say as well. It, it, the 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 climate has changed. I mean, yes, they're, they're very respectful now, and right. and people will. You always get an email, or you should always get an email saying there's going to be exertions. Mm -hmm. Um, they let you know ahead of time, and they always ask. Like I've mm -hmm. I've. I mean, I've had a couple of sessions where it's gotten really bad and I've just, and they just say, we'll bring you back there. They, and I've had this happen recently. I just recorded, I, I just booked a really <laughs> big video game and I recorded the whole thing in my closet. Um, and they're so amazing. And I can't wait to tell you who it is at some point. Cause I want to shout this company from the rooftops because they are so fantastic. They literally booked me, I think for four sessions and we went to six sessions because they were so, cons they were like, look, just take your time. And, it, you know, I was recording it from my own closet. I was my own engineer. I was my own. So it's like, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, and so they were just really amazing. And they said, don't even worry about it. We're, we're not going to shortchange quality and we're not going to put your voice at risk. We're going to pay you whatever it takes to get this done. And so I do want to say that a lot of the, the companies out there are being extremely, they yeah. understand vocal health know. now. Good. They do. They understand it and they're, they're really good about it. So I just, I want to that. yeah, that props. That needs That's, to, yeah. Yeah. That's been my experience since the strike too. That they, and they also limit the exertion sessions to two hours. Yeah. So two hours is like, okay, you pretty much can handle that. Um, it was interesting. I was doing a game this this week, actually, and now in COVID times, you know, we all have these like home studio setups, but and I have like a really nice mic and you know all this stuff, but it wasn't exactly what they wanted. So they had like a an engineer come in a hazmat suit and set up like a whole nother COVID like COVID setup wow. with like a separate mic, computer, <clears throat> monitor, you know, everything. And, and it was controlled remotely. So I was like, this is very strange. Cause I thought, Oh, I thought, Oh, maybe I got a leg up cause I got a home studio, you know, but um, Did they let you keep it? <laughs> no. No. it was such a, I was like, there was so much stuff in this tiny room. I was like, please take it away. <laughs> take it away. But I think it's just amazing, you know, how adaptable the voiceover business has been during COVID. And I think we all, I know that I feel very lucky um, to be in this industry because we really all can work remotely. I, 
It's not preferred. Even something like this, I would much rather be in the room with the fans, with yeah. Mark, and be able to give Jason a hug and L and, you know, have a drink with you but guys after. John. What? <laughs> but not John. Not John. Definitely yeah. not. I, I don't even want to be with me. <laughs> you're the only one with a mask you should be the one that gets hugs. <laughs> all the hugs but and here Alice, we are you know Alice, it doesn't work. you can leave us for a moment if you need to take care of an errand did it's you okay. see that okay that was like okay. from an hour ago <laughs> yeah i'm sorry okay i'll be back um let me we're, we're going to take questions from the uh people in the chat room in a moment uh if you ask questions real earlier they've scrolled off for me so ask them again um let me ask well uh, Actually, let me see what we've got here. Recent questions that have been. Uh, 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 here's a very simple question. Of all the voices you guys played, which one's your favorites? You guys rock in all of them, you know. Thanks, Blossom44100. <laughs> I, that's all, I get that question a lot, and I always say it's like picking your favorite child. You know, I only have one child, so it's easy for me, but I, it, I love them all because it, it, each, each one uh, has brought me joy and it's each individual way. Um, and the way that the fans have received them, especially in the jobs that become popular. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to pick uh, just one. I'll, I'll, you know, top three would be like Max Goof, uh, 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 Binks from Hocus Pocus. And then uh, I voiced this character Cade in a show called Transformers Rescue Bots. That was a, that was a good time. Elle, what's your favorite character? Um, I mean, I kind of e echo what Mars is saying, but like, I, I, I have, I have eighteen voices in World of Warcraft, um, and I love that my three sort of main characters: one is Scottish, one is British, and one is American. I play Valtois, the Arcanist. I play Tess Greymane, and I am uh, 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 Moira Thorison. You stand before Moira, Queen Regent of the Dark Eye, and watch your tongue. So. Who doesn't want to play that character? Because she's like, you know, scary mm -hmm. and stuff. John, you got one favorite character that you can name? Actually, I don't. I have to echo everybody else's echo. Um, there are a few of them that I really enjoyed. If I was going to take my three, I would take it in different stages in the career, which is the Wally Gator that I started out doing very early on in the voice business. And then when I did Animaniacs and I did Bobby Goodfeather, which was at that time nobody was really doing De Niro. So I had the market cornered on De Niro. And then, <laughs> and then you know, um, <clears throat> the Burgess Meredith thing, for some reason, I've gotten mm. a number of calls for. So you John, know. will you do that again, please? Because that was amazing. Do the, do your Burgess Meredith again. Do you do any Batman, any Penguin Burgess Meredith? Well, it's all this. You know, it's a little bit of all the same thing now. First of all, when you're doing Burgess Meredith, I'm uh, lucky. Uh, you got to kind of lower what they call the IQ, see? <laughs> and when you bring them back to the Batman days, then you got to make them a little bit more intelligent, you know, and a little bit more sinister. Yeah, Batman and Robin have been a boil on my leg long enough. You know, so, uh, <laughs> but I, I personally like this guy because he's he's got rum-soaked underwear, you know? He's a little bit <laughs> a bit and he's got no... I came back at the right time. Yeah, you can come back at the right. Uh, the rums 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 rums. Allison, everyone's doing their impression of Burgess Meredith. We all did it. Now it's your turn. <laughs> rums, dumb, dumb, dumb. <laughs> uh, for that. Uh, Allison, what's your favorite character you've done? My favorite <laughs> character. Who? Jeez. <laughs> um. <clears throat> I don't know. You know, well, I well, I have this try, character try, try that this, I try, try this. What's yeah. the character you've done that's the closest to being the exact opposite of you? That's the exact opposite. The, the most unlike you. Oh, as okay. A well, check this out. She's a prop lady. <laughs> it's a prop comic. I played this. Is it a butt? Is it a cat it's, butt? A giant, it's a giant butt. That is farts. that my butt from my audition? <laughs> 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 it just is like, <laughs> make it quiver, make it quiver. <laughs> Hey, is this look familiar? <laughs> Gee, I'm glad you got that part. I was up for it, and I was just a little shy. <laughs> You're going to get a T-shirt that says, Make it quiver. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, what's, what's your favorite character you've done in cartoons? Well, there's a lot. <clears throat> but, you know, I, I was hired to do Falcor. But then as an afterthought, he asked me to do the Rockbiter. 
and I love the rock fighter. The rock Isn't fighter, that and, yeah. Oh, oh, this is oh, this is so good. Mm. Oh, I love this quartz. Oh, mm. <laughs> these big hands. Yeah, I love the rock fighter. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank That's you. Awesome. <laughs> uh, here's a question for me. Devin, the adventurer, wants, hey, Mark, will you get Tara Strong and Mark Hamill mm -hmm. in the next voice panel? Mm -hmm. uh, the next voice panel is already cast, and so is the one after it. If we keep doing these, I will ask Tara and Mark to be in them. They, they're not The next one, we've got Maurice LaMarche, oh. Neil Ross, and Debbie Derryberry. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> Neil Kaplan, I think, and I, a couple other folks. And uh, the one after that is also full. We got Bill Farmer in that one, no. and Misty Lee and Lorraine Newman. There, there we've got uh, uh, people coming up and such like that. But there's a lot of good people. I could do these things forever and always have people ask me, when are you going to get this person in? And I don't know how long we're going to do them. Depends on how many people watch this. If you want, if you want us to do more of these voice panels, talk them up on the Internet. Send post links. Get people to watch them more. It'll, I'll get. It'll, we'll get more enthusiasm for doing more of these right. if we, uh, if we keep doing more. Uh, Tom, my friend Tom Galloway wants to know, L, how did you learn to do so many American accents, and did your Scots background cause you any problems getting jobs to do non Isles accented characters? Um, that's a really good question. Very good question. Um, thank you. Uh, I, what I will say is that I grew up watching american television and american cartoons and american everything and i was a mimic I, I i mean i was a voice actor when i was a kid i just wasn't getting paid for it and so for me when i came to america i already had an american accent so it it wasn't like i for me it was like i didn't have to learn it it was like i just it was something that was i i had it by osmosis from just being that little kid that just like watched cartoons on a Saturday and watched anime and watched every show and watched all of your TV that was American. So um, that was my playground and my schooling. So for me, and I think just because I was a musician and I'm a singer, I've just always had that kind of ear. So I, I can't, I pick up accents. Did you have a favorite American TV show? Uh, <laughs> Um, I t well, I kind of loved Beverly Hills 90210. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. I don't know why. I got a psychic vibe. And also Dawson's Creek. So I kind of loved Dawson's Creek. Um, but I loved like all the, uh, uh, all the, the procedurals, Cagney and Lacey, even though I was like old, like I was, uh, it was kind of a lot done by the time I was watching it. it was like I remember when I was watching Cagney and Lacey, I was just like, they're so badass. And they were like the original, you know. <laughs> strong women so that was really cool and can i just say i'm so sorry allison i realized i completely interrupted you it, what was that butt character i need to know <laughs> uh it, i i don't think it was called like far i mean maybe somebody on the internet knows um <laughs> they you know i did like 50 characters in this show so uh, cheek squeak. Oh, look, it says on the back of the map. <laughs> this so was handed out at Comic Con. They, they gave these out yeah. to people. Um, yeah. So, so yes, I but, wore uh, this mask of a butt on my face, and yeah. it was my voice. And uh, by the way, Allison didn't really give me a choice. Allison, <laughs> just like do it. If you go to the market and they say you have to wear a mask to go in, that's not what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> wear, your wear your mask, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no gross. <laughs> um, That's great. Let's see here. Uh, let me get any more questions here. Uh, okay, here's a so, so question. How much of the career is doing the work and how much of it is finding the work? <laughs> oh, man. Well, Rob Paulson says that, uh, you know, we our job is auditioning. That's, you know, that's, that's if that answers the question. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, work. that's the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. The work what, what, would you, what would you say is a acceptable ratio of auditions to, to jobs booked? Ninety. No, but if you got ninety, you mean ninety getting ninety percent of what you audition for, or no, no, like ninety percent auditioning, like ten percent like book booking. Okay, so if you if in a yeah. given period you audition for forty things and you got four more yeah or that one, would be you know, yeah. that would be you'd more be, than you'd be yeah. fine that would be yeah. great yeah and, Al and allison how many shows do you might you audition for in a, how many jobs might you audition for in a well, week I mean, I mean, I audition not just for shows, but but commercials and oh, promo how and many, narration. How many, how many voiceover jobs might you audition for in a week? I've been trying to keep track because I feel like that's useful information, but it's I, I think it's probably like about thirty, maybe thirty auditions a week. 
something like that. Yeah. yeah. Alan came in. But not all animation, <laughs> not all fun stuff. I did a cartoon show some years ago uh, called Channel Umpty 3, which was on the CW <laughs> network, and, and nobody saw it. Nobody noticed it. But Alan came into audition for a role in a regular character, and we wanted him, and the network wanted someone else. And uh, <laughs> I wish we had had Alan in that show. He was, he was, the audition was so good that I thought to myself, I actually, as we were auditioning, he was not the first, he was like the first or second person in. And I thought, well, that's it. We've got our guy. We don't need to audition these other nine people. And it happens occasionally. Sometimes, you know, you audition for something and you're great and you don't get it. But then later on, you'll get something else to make up for it mm. uh, and things like that. It, it happens. It's a very strange business. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I did it. Also did a cartoon show one time. This will interest you guys. I did a, AB, a CBS story break and they did extensive auditions, way more than we needed. And they picked out um, the uh, uh, cast they wanted. They wouldn't let me have a say. Usually I have some say in the shows that I'm writing, but I wasn't voice directing this, and they kept me out of the process. So we had in the show a character um, who I described as sounding like Sheldon Leonard. You all remember Sheldon <laughs> Leonard, Linus the Lionhearted, you know, yeah. the ancient type character. Aww. And I, I, I patterned the character after him, and I asked him to try to see if they could get Sheldon Leonard, who was retired, but you know, maybe we could get him to come in and do this cartoon. Well, they couldn't get Sheldon Leonard because they didn't want to offer him any money. They wanted someone for scale, and he wanted more than that. So they auditioned some people who did Sheldon Leonard sound alikes. So the day of the recording session, I went in, and I did not know who they'd booked for anything. And I went up, I walked in the session, and Howie Morris, who was a good friend of mine, was sitting there. And, I, uh, and I'm sure, Alan, you must have worked with Howard Morris at some point in your life. Um, I also worked with Sheldon Leonard. I played his <laughs> brother. Wow, what, what did you play his brother in? Do you remember? Big oh, Big Eddie. Eddie. Big Eddie, that's right, with Sherry North. And that's right. Uh, that's right. It was a sitcom. So we, if I may interrupt you for a second yeah, here. Go ahead. Sure. We were having a table read, and Sheldon read his line, and then I started to read my line like this, and he said, hold it. Why is it I sense a loss of identity? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. So anyway, so, so I saw Howie Morris was sitting there, and I walked up to him and said, hello. And I said, which character are you playing? And he said, oh, I'm playing the Sheldon Leonard type mouse. And I thought, well, that's an interesting choice, but okay, you know, maybe he did a good one. So then I saw Peter Leeds. Uh, I don't know how many of you know Peter Leeds. Peter Leeds was one of those guys who was in everything for years uh, and, and wonderful actor. And I saw Peter, I wanted to say hello to him because I'd worked with him on, uh, on one of Stan Freeberg's records. And I said, what character are you playing here, Peter, in the show? And he said, I'm playing the Sheldon Leonard mouse. And then I walked over, and uh, Hamilton Camp was sitting there. And I said, Hamilton, good to see you. What part are you playing? He said, I'm playing this Sheldon Leonard mouse. These guys are marking their scripts. And what had happened was they had they had made their decisions, and then they handed a list to the secretary to book the people, and the secretary had booked the rejects. Oh, the, my God. They had booked everybody but who they wanted. Oh, no. So. Oh. Jesus. They, I went into the wow, booth. Wow. I went to the, the guy who was voice directing, who was wow. very, very unqualified for the job. I said, I'm going to do you a large favor. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they rearranged the parts. I wow. don't know because they booked the people. They had to pay them. They didn't want to send them home and bring everybody back. So Howie Morris did a different character. I think Peter Leeds wound up doing the Sheldon Leonard yeah. mouth. And how he did a different character. They re so wow. they basically they didn't hire any of their first choices by accident. Jesus That's Christ. what happens occasionally in shows. Wow. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, uh, another question. Allison mentioned having children. For those of you who have had small children, how do they react to hearing you on a show they like? Oh, he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he. You know, we watch. I like a lot of shows together and he definitely has this, like he's really into Scooby-Doo, um, Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, all the. Does he know um, that's on a certain show? Does he know that's mommy? Yeah. Well, um, I try to tell him cause you know, I mean, it's, it's all I have. So I'll be like space racers. You want to watch space racers today? And he, they'll, he'll be in, the, in it for like one or two episodes and like, love it. And then be like, uh, no, let's watch Scooby-Doo. <laughs> How old is your son now, Allison? Four and a half. Oh my gosh. I know it's crazy. So, and you know, with um, 
the global pandemic. It's uh, but there's been a little bit more TV than usual, mm. um, but it's okay. I think it's fine. You try to get him to watch good stuff, you know. But there's so much stuff out now. It's it's overwhelming, you know. And there's a lot of some really great dubs and some dubs that are just bizarre. But he loves them, you know. <laughs> just like da, 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 kids singing and mm. you know bizarre stuff, but. He loves it. Wow. Doesn't care about me, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he does. Okay. Let me, now, let's, you, we're we're, we're going to move towards wrapping this up. Um, uh, John, uh, I want to ask you, uh, do you think the Spolin players will will start up in person as soon as the pandemic's over? No. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to tell people to go see it. As soon as, well, as soon as the pandemic's over, I, I'd like to know when that is. Um, you know, I guess, I guess, right, like I said, right now we're exploring doing stuff online. So um, if, if we yeah. do stuff online, I'll definitely drop you a line and you can, you know, definitely send them. I, you know, I can't wait to get back on stage, but I don't know when that's going to be. But I'm sure when we all get cleared, we're going to try and find a way. But as soon as that happens, I'll definitely give you the heads up. Okay. That's good. Now, Jason, you've got a new show you're doing yes yes thank you for asking i have i since i moved to nashville and became in entrenched with the the music scene here which is incredible and uh you know it's not just country i thought it was just country but there's uh there's rock there's hip-hop there's punk uh, there's uh, r&b and there's like uh, a huge stand-up comedy scene and there's like a circus scene so for my 40th birthday i threw myself a variety show and i patterned it after like a Laughing or Hee Haw or Dean Martin show, and I and I got musicians and circus performers and comedians. We did a little bit of everything. I called it the Mars Variety Show, and we did it live. And it was such a big hit. I just kept doing it. So during uh, since we're all staying at home, um, um, I produced a a stay at home version of it, which you can find on. Uh, it's going to premiere actually this Monday, the 29th. I'm going to drop it on YouTube at 5 p.m. Central. Uh, yeah, and just follow Mars Presents on a uh, on YouTube, and it's got live music, it's got little circus performers, it's got sketched, it's got little uh, little shorts and stuff, and then I, you know, act like a like an idiot in between. That's good, and people can <laughs> probably find out about by following you on Instagram. Also, would, would you please? Yes, please follow me on Instagram. I'd love it. Good. Okay, um, let's go back to John here, John. Your social media listing here shows us that we can reach you on Twitter and yes. see you go to your Facebook page. You got anything else coming up that people want to should follow you for, or are you just sitting home until the pandemic's over? Well, that's that's where we're at right now. I mean, there's a couple of things that uh, actually I'm waiting for production for some on camera stuff because I had booked some stuff prior to the to the shutdown. So um, I, obviously I can't say too much about it, but I'm scheduled to do some well, stuff on camera. John, John, we don't really care about on camera. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think so. Any, uh, anybody, anybody can act with their face. Yeah, that's we true. We're impressed by acting with your voice. Yeah, that's true. No, never mind. Strike that. <laughs> Thank you. L, um, here's your social media listings. L Newlands at Twitter. L Newlands Graham on Instagram. Uh, people should follow you. Anything special they should look for coming up soon? Um. Yeah, I've got like, uh, you know what it's like with the NDEs. I have a, a bunch of projects that I can't wait to talk about, but I think that's probably going to be late this year. Maybe, er well, I have one coming up in October. I think it's coming out. And then I have some stuff coming at the end of the year. And then who knows, but, you know, yes, just follow me. I don't tweet much. I post a lot on Instagram and it's mostly my dog. So if you like <laughs> more you like jiggly butt posts. <laughs> Yay! Hey, there's some picture, is that, is, do I remember some pictures on your Instagram of you riding horses? Yes, I have a, I have a very, I have an old horse. She's 26 now. She is a retired polo horse. I never played polo on her. I just took her over. Um, and she is the light of my life, as is my mm -hmm. dog. I just love my animals. So if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, that's pretty much that and a lot of sunny memes about feelings. Because no. I, I like to post that stuff. Positive, right? Positive. Yes. Right, Thank you. Okay. Allison, here we've got you. You're, oh, this is easy to remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm lucky. The joys, of, the joys of having a unique first name. Yeah. You're, you're, 
<laughs> yeah, there. I've actually been on a, a social media hiatus since last June. I was doing some social distancing, you know, before all this even started. So, but I'm getting ready to get back on and I definitely miss everybody. Um, so you can also find me on my website, which is just alisonpacker.com. You can send me a message through there and um, I will definitely get back to you. Um, so I'll, I'll be back soon, but yeah, it's been, um, digital detox is a very good thing for That's the soul. Yeah. You know? yeah. Indeed it is. For real. Yeah. And Mr. Oppenheimer, you're not on social media, but I'm recommending mm -hmm. that everybody go to the IMDB and look you up because it is one of the most impressive careers I have ever seen in my mm -hmm. life. You oh, are, uh, you. You, you have, we haven't even gotten into your movie roles and, and, and your stage productions and things like that. Mm -hmm. I, I have, yeah. been, I am in awe of people who work all the time. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, but I mean, I mean, my father, my father was never impressed that I knew John Travolta. He was impressed that I knew Howard Morris because Howard Morris was always in something and usually something very good over the years. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. uh, I'm really oh, yeah. grateful for you for joining us on this because, uh, yeah. and boy, were people excited when I announced we were going to have you on mm -hmm. this this show. They remember. Absolutely. They remember. And, and I am, my website is www.newsfromme.com. M E is my initials. And if you want to know when we're doing the next one of these, it'll be announced there. It'll be announced all the usual places. Uh, and I'll tell you that we're going to do two of them in the month of July. And then I'm going to reassess whether I want to keep doing these uh, as to whether or not we get a lot of viewers on these things. So, uh, uh, this uh, the the second of these panels in July will be in conjunction with Comic Con, uh, and they're doing some online stuff. And uh, I like to doing panels that have no commercial value to me whatsoever, uh, no profits, no no thing. And I think we need more of those on the internet because too much of the internet is turning into infomercials these days. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. anyway, um, that is. Does anybody want to mention anything else we haven't covered here today? Can I just say, uh, Mr. Oppenheimer, because I don't know if uh, we'll ever get to work together again, but what a pleasure. And I still have my autograph <gasps> that I got from you at ShrineCon. And oh you said, you said we have fun, don't we? Yeah, we do, man. Appreciate yeah. you so much. Appreciate you, you so much. Aww. Yeah. Brilliant. And, you know, I Alan, we, so we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't mention your Transformers jobs, did we? No. Okay. You just mentioned them. Okay. <laughs> I did. I did Beachcomber and Warpath and uh, yeah, somebody you were, else. You're you on GI Joe and you were on Transform. There's a long. It, I think there was a rule for a long time you couldn't do a cartoon show without Alan Oppenheimer on it. It was <laughs> amazing. You should. You should but, be my agent, Mark. Honest to God. Uh, <laughs> right. Well, yeah, you want to end the career? If you want to end the career now, I'll be glad to be that. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you all for tuning hey, in. Thanks so much. This show, this thank you. The show will repeat Fantastic. added tonight every one of you on YouTube, so you can watch. If you came into the middle, you can watch the beginning in about two minutes. It'll be up there, and it will be up there for a long time. Tell your friends to go see it, and we will see you. I think it's February 11th. I'm going to do the next one of these with uh, oh. Maurice and Marsh. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Will. Thank Neil, you. Neil, Thank Neil you very Ross. much. Thank Neil Ross is now the voice of the game show Press Your Luck, and he does the whammies. We'll talk about that. Thank wow. you all. We'll Thank see you very soon. Thank you, Mark. Bye.